What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Unpolished Podcast. And today, I'm really just feeling a rant. I was just telling Alex, I need to rant. And I think what sparked it was uh, <clears throat> I had shared something on the um, business, the, the gym Instagram. And it was about a woman's remains who were found... Uh, pretty far from, from where she was, uh, she disappeared and her, her remains were found. They found out who it was through her dental records and her, her bones, which is insane. And I shared it on my story and I had said something along the lines of, um, stop pretending that this isn't possible. And uh, alluding that you should work out and, and be physically capable. You know, with life, everyone's life is different. Some people are going to require more physical. They're going to have more physical requirements in life. While other people may not. They may choose a more cushy lifestyle. But the fact of the matter is when shit happens, you don't know shit's about to happen. People that get murdered don't know. They, they don't wake up and they're like, oh, today's the day I'm, I'm going to have to encounter someone. Today is the day a semi-truck is going to come steaming by and I'm going to have to jump out the way. Nobody plans for shit to hit the fan. That's, 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 it's always a surprise when people die, when, when casualties happen, when people get kidnapped or raped or murdered, and it sounds extremely morbid and disgusting, and it is. But if you are someone that's pretending it's not going to happen to you, it's like I told a, a really close friend of mine when I started jujitsu. Alex, I don't even think I told you this story. No. Yeah. I told a really close friend of mine when I started jujitsu. You know, I... I I loved it. Like, I loved the competitive nature of it. I loved doing it. And uh, it really brought the athlete out of me again. And 99% and of the reason I'm doing it is for, for working out and for um, fun. And then the other 1% in my mind, which is it's a much larger percentage now. It's much larger than 1%. But I'd rather have those tools in my tool belt and be able to fend someone off or – I mean, the, the amount of things that you can learn in jiu-jitsu is insane. I, I'm like a level one of all. I barely know anything compared to what you can know. But I remember telling this guy, again, really close friend of mine, I'd rather have that information and that and then the ability to shut someone off than, you know, not then have to need it and not have it. And he goes, dude, it's freaking 2024. Okay, nobody's coming after you, Steve. Nobody's trying to nobody's trying to beat you up, especially you. Look how big you are and blah blah blah. It's like if everybody thought like that, if you thought like that all the time, like their danger will never happen to me. But like one, that's such a stupid thing to think. Well, I mean, that argument completely falls apart. I train jujitsu too, and it's like, yeah, maybe they're not coming after you because you're big, dude. I'm like average size, dude. Yeah. Not that big. And I had this thought. I was at uh, my sister's volleyball game. And, like, I saw this dude walking in. And he's, like, bald. He's got the beard going. But he's super fat. Not super, but, like, pretty fat. I'm, like, that's a big dude. But he couldn't touch me. Mm -hmm. Like, he could for sure, like, Isn't that knock me down, whatever. I'm, like, there's no way that man can restrain me. Isn't Unless it if so he trains, funny? then maybe. But I'm how, like, you can't keep me down. Isn't this so I will funny get up. how our brains work, like as men? Oh, yeah. Like one of the first things I do when I walk in a room is I, one, I check for, I, I have an exit strategy. Yep. So I, I like, if, if it's somewhere I've never been before and I don't know where I'm at, I'll just know where to go, especially if I'm with my family. Because if, if again, if something happens, I'd rather, you know, have the the whereabouts and, and understanding my bearings before I a have plan. to yeah I just want to plan ahead just in case and so many people think that's weird and I'm like that you know what's weird is not planning for shit to happen like that's yeah. weird that because it, it can happen but it's so funny how we measure as men we're just like oh, I could totally take that little bitch look at that yeah. guy well I looked at that dude and I'm like he's not a little bitch like dude's probably big pretty boy. strong yeah big boy probably yeah. probably strong I'm like 
guarantee he's not holding me down. He could take me down. He could do something, maybe. But, like, and a, I'm getting and, back up, and I can run faster than him. And typically a big guy has the thought in their head, like, oh, I can I can control everyone in the room. Nope. That, that's, you know, I, I would admit that I was kind of like that. I was a big giant. I, dude, I was 260 at one point. Strong as a freaking ox. And I thought, like, oh, dude, I could... I can lift up anyone. I can stop anyone from trying to attack me, dude. I didn't. I I would have got my ass kicked by a hundred fifty pound black belt. Nope. Yep. Just up and down the gym if if they wanted to. Like the the amount of knowledge that you can learn and, and body awareness and self defense that you can learn in jujitsu. But and I'm I'm not even talking. This video isn't even about jujitsu. As much as I promote jujitsu, it's about being physically capable if you have to. Like, just imagine for a moment. It's like the idea of a gun. Okay? Alex is packing right now. He's Yeehaw. scared of me. That's why. <laughs> no, Alex not. is packing right now. It's not because he thinks... It, it's, it's not because we're, we're going to try to shoot someone. That's, that's not why you have a gun. You have a gun in case someone else has a gun. In case someone else has something deadly. In case... Someone's in imminent danger, and you can you can save someone. It's yep. like why I have a fire extinguisher in my truck. Someone exactly. laughed at me the other day. I opened up my Ram box, and I have a giant fire extinguisher in there. And they're like, what the hell do you got that for? I was like, do you think if someone was on fire in the middle of a highway, they would think it's weird if I run up and I put out that fire? No. They would be extremely thankful. Extremely thankful. So it's about being... I think, and, and I think the first step to all of this is being physically capable. You can plan all you want, but if you're not physically capable, it's like if someone, again, going back to, to the, there's a truck on fire. What am I going to waddle over if I'm 300 pounds and obese? You're going to fucking run. I'm going to be way more capable if I work out just a little bit. I'm not even asking you to be like a freaking John Wick I'm not asking you to be a CrossFit a, champion. Yeah, that's I'm not. That's not what I'm asking you yeah. to do because it, we're gonna get to some videos in a second. But we want to show you some examples of videos and uh, just relate it to how important it is. And what just what a waste! Like what a waste! If you're just sitting there wasting away, oh, Steve's talking about working out again. Here we go. But if you're just sitting there wasting away and you're getting the freaking potato chips and you're wait the one body. The one body that you have, that, that you're given, and you're just shitting on it. It's like having one car and, and just never, never changing the tires, never getting an oil change. That's not going to be a reliable car. So when it comes down, like, if you take care of your car, you, you change the oil, you fill it with gas, you make, make sure everything's prepped, and let's say a fire comes into play, like, Hawaii, let's say a flood comes into play and you got to get in your car fast and you got to load your family, you got to pick your kids up, you got to sprint to the car. You, If you seriously want to argue that being physically capable or, or even being physically dominant, having the ability to be dominant in a situation like that, that's not going to save more time. That's not going to save more energy. That's not going to save your family. You're crazy. You're just insane. How can you not be taking care of the one body that you have? The only thing, the only, like the only body I'm ever going to get. Maybe one day, you know, when Elon's creating this neural link and all this crap, we're good bionic stuff, but it's not happening anytime soon. And even then you still got to have a healthy heart. You still got to have a healthy brain, but I want to get to some videos on here. Um, this one specifically really hit home with me because when I saw it, we had kids. I mean, we still got kids in strollers. So, uh, Alex, want to roll this one real quick? Yeah. Oh, so, oh, my God, dude. And then she's just toast. Now, this, this stroller is rolling. For those of you not watching, it's a video of a stroller rolling away. And clearly, like, some grandma, or it could even be a mom, I don't think it's a mom. It looks like a grandma. She's on duty, and she's in charge of these kids in this stroller. And this stroller's rolling away into, looks like, 
decently high speed traffic and this pedestrian comes sprinting out of nowhere to stop this stroller. Yeah, I mean, that stroller is going straight into the street. Without this guy, this baby would have been plowed by a 40 mile an hour car. And so uh, people want to get upset when we share these harsh realities and then they, they make it personal. Like, oh, well, what if this lady was whatever? What if she had, you know, she had a cane and then she couldn't get to it? Well, maybe. But let's just talk generically for a second. All that's required to stop this stroller is like one cut step and about six miles an hour initially. It looks like the stroller picks up speed. Yeah, it's on a hill. It's on a hill. It definitely picks up speed. But... One, the awareness. So, obviously, the awareness was down. She did not lock the wheels. You got to lock the wheels on the stroller. Yeah. But two, she face plants immediately. Panic mode ensues. She face plants immediately and then clearly, like, she probably hit her knee or something. Mm -hmm. Because you can tell she's in pain. She can't even stand up. Yeah. But to be this physically, and like, this could have been the death of her grandchildren. Sometimes I think thinking morbidly like that, like I, there's been times where I'm like, man, what if I couldn't save my kid? Like I, I, I have, I'm sure I have darker thoughts than most, but like, uh, for instance, we were in like the Ozarks and I remember we were on a boat and I was driving and, uh, the boat did like something weird. It kind of like tilted weird. And I just remember thinking like, could I save my family if this boat goes over? And it, it totally fuels me that little bit extra to, to go work out, to be physically capable. Or like thinking about Maui. Yeah. Could you, as a parent, as a dad, as a mom, could you swoop up your kid and get out of the fire? I think most men can't. What are we, like 50% obese now? For sure, yeah. I think the lowest obesity rate in any state is like 30%. 30% obese, but I think the no. average is like 55. I think in America it's 50-something, yeah. In in, in America, yeah. not in, yeah. I think I think in, um, I want to say it was Arizona, actually, which would make sense because they're hot all the time, so people are outside hiking, being active. I want to say it was Arizona where it was like a lower obesity rate. But this could have been the like the obliteration of a grandchild. If this guy wasn't there, because this is just, Security. Yeah, it's just security footage. I was going to say, who's filming and watching? <laughs> yeah, security camera. But again, I'm not asking you to be John Wick. I'm asking you to be able to beeline to a stroller, take 10 hard steps. Because that's got to be like five miles an hour, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just five, six miles an hour. It starts out at like a light jog speed. It looks like it even slows down down there too like it levels off it's yeah. hard to tell with this with this camera angle but just a little working out going on walks like this this lady is obviously obese her like skin folds are folded over in the back she's definitely in pain you can tell yeah but i i hope i can only hope that this happened and she's like okay i need to lose some weight okay i need to i need to eat better i need to take care of myself for my grandchildren it had to, had to be the scariest moment of her life. Like, t- t- just laying there with knee pain, trying to, like, look up and stand up while this stroller just gets obliterated. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine how helpless that feels. Oh, my God. To know, like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't get up. Oh, my I God. I can't run. To put myself in that mindset and then to be like, oh, she's got to be thinking, like, oh, my God, this is so my fault. This is my fault. This is my fault. This is my fault. Yep. But it's it's... It's not like a like I can't go buy something. It's not like a one click fix. I can't buy something tomorrow, and and this this uh, this scenario is wiped away. This this scenario is possible for the next six months while this lady makes the decision to get in better shape. But I'm willing to bet, you know, she was awake for twelve hours and she was like, oh my god, oh my god, my grandchild almost got obliterated because of me. Oh my god, oh my god, and then she forgot about it the next day. I'm yeah. willing to bet because the the commitment for a life change for fitness is is so large, especially when you're this far off. You know, like you can't you can't go on a light jog. 
Like you can't you can't take one cut step and save a stroller. You're just you're in in your head. You're too far gone, and that's where a lot of people get. A lot of people get like I'm too far gone. I like, screw it. I'm done. I'm done for. What a silly silly mindset. Yeah, to I have. mean you see that with everything. People yeah. just kind of like I'm too old. It's like are you really though? You couldn't make a change. You got you know ten more years left in your life. I'm like. You don't think you could do anything in 10 years? Yeah. I don't get it. You ever seen the video of a, it's like a 94-year-old man doing a sprint? Yeah. That's awesome. I've seen a bunch where they get the, they get like, like a bunch the of super old men senior together. Olympic events. Yeah. Where that's it's like, super cool. you know, 70, 80, 90-year-olds like running 100 meter me. dash. I don't think I'm making it to 90. We'll see. My, my great, my, not my great grandpa, my, my kid's great grandpa just, actually, no, he hasn't turned, what day is today? Today's the 9th? Mm-hmm. So the eleventh, my grandpa will be ninety years old. He's scooting now, but still ninety years old. He's walking. He's driving his own car. Yeah. Makes me nervous as hell to watch watch him it was do just, all that uh, stuff. My great aunt just turned ninety, and she still lives on her own. Does her yard work and gardens. She That's doesn't drive, goal. so she gets picked up. That's but the goal. It's crazy. I don't think I'd want to drive. Like, I don't think I, like, I, I, you know, you miss stuff now. Like, you could just, like, sort of space out and miss stuff now. Just imagine when you're 90, your brain is just fizzling away. That's, like, the, you get in the car, and that's, like, the time where it just, your brain shuts off. It's like, damn it. Anyway. Want to roll this next one? Yeah, roll this next one. This one is, Alex just showed me this one. I've never seen this one. This one's hilarious. That is max speed right there. So this guy Full realizes, spin. he realizes a semi truck is about to crash off road. So, I mean, maybe it's not full speed. Maybe. But the assumption is that, holy shit, I'm about to die. You're going to see like max effort run away. So we have to assume that that's max effort run away. Play it one more time. He looks like he looks like like a penguin. Looks like a penguin trying to run and he's clearly extremely large. This guy doesn't even need to work out to move faster. He just needs to take off 100 pounds. Yeah. You don't even need to work out. I mean, I put myself in that situation. I'm like there's no chance I'm not trying to move full speed. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. Especially, I, I might have the wherewithal to be like, okay, after ten steps, like, I'm free and clear. But dude, I'm taking those first ten steps fast. As oh, I I'm can. taking twenty steps as fast as I can. Like, I, you just leave leave no room for doubt. There's there's a semi truck going off the road towards you and your your little stop sign. I'm booking it, and that's, that so that's that's that guy booking it. I mean, just, it was just a little waddle. And it also leaves so much, so much room for error, like when you're that slow. So you have to react. Yeah, I mean, he cut it close. Yeah, he cut it close. Imagine if he saw it. A I second probably later. could have got six lanes over if I saw it the same time as him and I booked it the same way. This yeah. guy got one lane. I'd be over. standing in the ditch on the side of the road. Yeah. I would I'd probably I probably would have sprinted for three steps, turned, backpedaled, and watched because of my curious mind. Like, what's this gonna crash into? But this guy had to turn and just ooh, ooh, and he got one lane away. Yeah. He also took a poor angle, if you ask me. You gotta take a hard angle. Like this way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He took like the like the semi truck could have hit something and yeah, it's kind of moving in the same direction as yeah. the truck. Yeah. Like you're not outrunning that truck, buddy. No way, no way. Um, again, I don't even think you need to. You, you you don't even need to be in that great a shape. Just understand that shit happens in this world, and you gotta. Oh man, you gotta be able to move faster than that. Especially like you're a construction guy. I mean, how many of those What's guys are killed every there? year from this kind of scenario? Yeah, I would love to know this. Like. The possibility of this happening as a construction worker, like how many accidents happen in construction zones, that would be like the the the, the statistic to point out. I mean, I don't remember off the top of my head, but my buddy worked in construction at like a 
road construction company and he had sat in on safety meetings and they're talking about the stats. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but like they're there. Thousands of construction workers get killed on the side of the road from bad drivers every year. Well, and just my personal life, I've seen accidents in construction zones. I watched a lady. This thing was coned off. It was fresh concrete. This was in McHenry. Fresh concrete right off 120 in McHenry. This thing was coned off. There was like five people standing there like with stop signs and, and signs and all this stuff. This lady barreled through the cones, got stuck in the fresh new concrete. The accidents happen. People and this, out this, there don't pay attention. No. You have to it assume. It's like, it's like when I got my motorcycle license, my dad said, you have to pretend everyone's trying to kill you. And that's honestly probably what saved my life. I got hit in, I got hit in college. You yeah. knew that, right? No. Yeah, I, I saw it coming. It was so weird. It's uh, Cara Cowgill. She turned right in front of me. She was texting and driving. I was going straight. She turned right in front of me into a gas station. I locked the brakes. And if you know anything about motorcycles, the brake, the back brake does absolutely nothing for you because it's this little, like, one-by-one one inch of rubber on the ground. And I was going probably 35, 40 miles an hour. So instead of weaving in oncoming traffic or to weave in, I think it was like a ditch to the right, I just jumped. And I literally cleared the car. I think my foot, my feet might have hit like the hood of the car or the top of the car, and I did some front flips. But, dude, I possibly saved my life. I had a, I had a helmet, but, like, who knows? But being if I wasn't physically capable, I mm. probably would have just barreled right in the side of the car. Yep. I mean, that's the same thing my grandpa told me when I got my driver's license when I was like 16 when I was 15 with my permit just told me he's like literally assume everyone's gonna hit you like you see a car turning onto your road assume they're gonna turn out in front of you and not see you that's what I did that's like exactly what I did when I was on that motorcycle I was like I had this weird feeling I felt like my butthole pucker up and I just remember thinking like this car is about to turn in front of me no turn signal no nothing by the way but I, I like felt it slowing down. I was like, this car's about to turn in front of me. And sure enough, like locked up the brakes for probably a second because I was like, okay, this ain't going to work. And I just bailed. Yeah. Total dead. I love that motorcycle. Freaking Cara. But let's watch this. Uh, let's watch this last one. Last one. Yeah. So this one, this one's crazy. So this is like, I don't remember reading why it was going on or the aftermath of it. I want to say it was just like a homeless dude who got yeah, let in. Just some creepy dude. Yeah. Just some creepy dude in an apartment complex gym and uh, starts approaching this female. You can tell she's clearly uncomfortable. She's I, she, she already swung on him and stuff. And mm -hmm. why she doesn't go out the door right there, I have no idea. But... The fact that she's able to fight the way she does, it's, I mean, it's almost useless, but she is fighting and there is merit to that. Like there, there is something to be said about being able to kick, punch, push, like she's throwing blows on him now. Mm -hmm. She clearly has no background in anything. It almost looks like the homeless dude might have a little background in something. He's got like, he's got like the sprawl going on, like yeah. with like a side control look. He's he he's got to be out of his mind, but she gets out now. So being being physically capable, one, and obviously she fend him off enough for him to quit doing whatever. I don't know what the goal was. I I can't imagine it was like kill her or something. I don't I I don't know I don't know. Dude's it out of his mind. It seems crazy. Like it seems like there was no rhyme or reason. He's just just like a I'm, dude out of his mind. Yeah. Who, I don't know. Wanted Which is possible. Something. It's possible for you to come across that dude. It's possible for you to see that person, to see a crazy person on their worst day. It is totally possible. And this lady ran into it. But she was physically capable. She kicked. She punched. She she pushed. She, she got out of the situation. You know, maybe someone less physically capable could have been worse. But mm -hmm. she also could have handled it a million times better. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just like, imagine if she was trained. Yeah, oh, imagine if she was trained. She would that have put dude that, never would have held her down like that. Would have put her, would have put him to sleep. Yeah, 
she would have calmly put that man to sleep. That would have been a video. I that mean, would have been a video. Lock him up in the garden. Yep, just pull him in a guard. <clears throat> Maybe probably guillotine him. Put him to sleep. Call the cops. Or worst case, you just you put me on my back. Cool, I'll just wrap you up. Mm-hmm. Your yeah. arms can't move. You can't get up. Yeah, if you're if you're I'm in a closed guard. In. Yeah. Yeah, if you're in a closed guard and you have like body control, as long as there's no weapons. Yeah. But if there's like a knife or something, then uh, I don't recommend that. But if you're in a closed guard and you you got body control, you're good. I can just hang out. You can just hang out there. You just hang out till someone shows up. Literally, just hang out till someone shows up. An untrained man. All right, let's be careful about this. I think an untrained man. Most of the time, average size man, average size female, an untrained man, we'll just say it generically, will have a really hard time of subduing a, a trained woman. Yeah. Because I also, if I'm thinking about it in like a self defense context too. Yeah, you're not if trying you're to trained, hurt. You're trained. I'm not trying to submit you. Yeah. I'm just trying to save myself. Mm-hmm. So if that you're means not, if, yeah, if, you're not if I can control offense. you for a second and then. My offense is to make a little distance to get up. That's all I need to do. Yeah, if if we're you know? talking like a trained woman on an untrained male, offense will be pretty useless, I think. Most of the time. It, it just it, it's it's highly depends how good you are. highly variable, right? Depends on uh, on a lot of things. But why not give yourself that chance? Why not give yourself that chance and that tool? Like why not have that tool in your tool belt? So if you need it, you freaking have it. I mean, the same tool that this lady had. She was just in fairly decent shape from what it looked like. And yeah. she could fight back a lot without of that's getting age. tired. Yeah, a lot of that's age. You can tell she's younger. Yeah. But you can keep that. You can keep that ability. Getting the ability initially, if you've lost it, is the hardest part. It's the hardest part. Being physically capable after being totally physically incapable, it's so hard to get there. And this is a message for all you athletes because I've watched you athletes finish sports and you blow up. And I mean blow up in a bad way. You get fat. You get lardy. You get, like, lazy. You take on your full-time job and I see you again and it's just like you're 20 pounds heavier. That's the, You need to stop right there. You need to see it in the freaking mirror. I don't know how you didn't see the first five or ten pounds, but you need to see it in the mirror. And you need to be disgusted with yourself that you're letting it happen. You've been this high-level athlete your whole life. You should be mad at yourself, and it's okay to be mad at yourself. Like we always say positive self-image, like positive self-talk and this and that. It's okay to be constructive to, to constructively criticize yourself. I do it every day. Every single day I look at the mirror. I'm like, wow, you little fat ass. Like, what are you doing? Like, fix this. Do this. Get bigger arms, this, that. And I, I would assume I'm, or not assume, I would consider myself a mentally healthy individual, even though I <laughs> attack myself like crazy. <laughs> like, absolute crazy. Like, body dysmorphia for me, oh, man, it is so real. So real. For you, too? Oh, yeah, dude. Just I just look in the mirror. Yeah. I'm just like, you I'll be like, fat. Have you pussy. visible you... abs. I'm just like, those aren't visible enough. Yeah. I like, stop being so fat. Yeah. Or I'll wake up and be like, wow, I look so scrawny right now. I'll be like three hours of sleep. I look so yeah. scrawny right now. You freaking dehydrated. Go get in the gym. But no, I'm the same way. But that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. Just being if, – if you're not working out for, for whatever reason, at least work out to save your grandkids. At least work out so some crazy homeless man can't rape you in a gym. At least work out – so you can get out of the way of a moving semi truck, so you don't die. I mean, you can start so small too. It's like just go on a walk. Go on a walk. What if your car broke down? And you had to walk a mile. Yeah. Like some people, that would be a fucking struggle. We have a client. It's like start there. Yeah, we have a client, and I I try to tell everyone. It's it's controversial because I'm I I tell people I'm like hey you got a fat friend you got a fat fam- family member why don't you invite them to the gym with you and it's 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 funny how fat is like offensive it's like I, I'm not saying it as as an in a, an offensive means like I, that's not why I'm saying it I'm saying like it just it's a descriptive word if you are fat 
and they happen to be your friend, you have a fat friend. It's not like, who's that fatty friend of yours? Like, I'm not saying it in yeah, a demeaning a way. It's value just like, judgment. It's just an observation. Yeah, it's funny because my client's like, well, can you say overweight instead? I'm like, okay, it's the same thing, but I'll say overweight for you. But I always tell them, like, if you got a fat friend, take them on a walk with you. And this one client, she took a friend on a walk, and it was like, I want to say it was like three miles, and about a half mile in, the one friend had to quit. But from my understanding, it made her realize, holy crap, I'm out of shape. Because mm -hmm. it's really easy to do no physical activity in this world. Yeah. It's really, well, it's really easy. really easy to just keep living in that delusion of I'm not. I'm not that out of shape. Yeah. You know, because you don't take yourself and go like, can I walk three miles? It's in my head. I'm like, yeah, I can walk three miles. But, but you you've can't. never done it. But you've never done it. So you got no proof. Like, oh, walking, walking three miles, that's no problem. And it was like, it's been probably years since you've done. What was that stat? It was like 98% uh, of people or 99% of people after age 30 never sprint again. Yeah. Yeah, I remember us. I think we talked about that. I think we did too. Yeah. And it's ninety nine percent like, of people. I can't fathom. I would say it's even less. Than, like it's probably like age like twenty six. Yeah. Like you get your big person job, you're done with your rec sports. Why would you sprint? Mm -hmm. But the people well, now we had seen to sprint. The video of uh, all the dudes, they're like Instagram, you know, algorithm bit, but they were doing a forty yard dash to determine their. Fantasy football draft order. Oh, yeah. And they all, like, pulled their hamstring. Yeah. And I was like, how? <laughs> Every single one of them? Because they never sprint. Like, four out of five. Yeah. They all, full effort, limping at the end, pulled hamstring. I'm like. Because they never sprint? Yeah. But that's the message for today. That's my rant. Over and out. You guys, just baby steps, man. And, and know that this... I've been told before that I come off very aggressive, and I'm okay with that. Like I, I don't think I want to change who I am or how I want to deliver this message. My family knows me this way. My friends know me this way. I think, well, I know. I know a lot of people respond well to me being aggressive about this because I'm so passionate about it. But just know, though it sounds aggressive and it might sound mean, I totally get that too. If you're a fatty— I'm sure that sounds mean, but it's also a fact. If you're overweight, you should lose weight. You should work out. You should eat better, and you should treat your body as if it's the only one you're ever going to have because it is the only one you're ever going to have. So do it for you. Do it for your family. Do it for your grandkids. Do it to be safe and to be physically capable. I'm out.